Karis, you ready to worship this morning? Come on. And we will stand up and not be shaken. Yes, we will stand up, one voice, this generation. Here we are, gathered in this place, and we come to seek your face. We want to know you more. Side by side, we will stand the line and declare to all the world the truth that sets us free. For eternity, and we will stand up and not be shaken. Yes, we will stand up, one voice, this generation. Here we are in this broken world of lies, and yet we know. Side by side, we will not back down. From our hearts, we shout it out the truth that sets us free for eternity. And we will stand up and not be shaken. Yes, we will stand up, one voice, this generation. And we will stand up, and not be shaken. Yes, we will stand up, one voice, this generation. Through the years and all that's come, Raging battles lost and won You will not forget your chosen one Through the years and all that's come Raging battles lost and won You will not forget your chosen one Cause we are not Heaven. 
So my praise belongs to you forever This is my testimony from death to life Cause grace rewrote my story I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified This is my testimony This is my testimony
because he is it's why I'm here and I will rise because he is Come on, let's give the Lord a shout in this place. Thank you, Jesus. The best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. Oh, he saves the best for last. Hallelujah. I do so good. We love you, Jesus.
Thank you. 
Lord, you are worthy. You are worthy of all of our praise. You are worthy of the breath that we're breathing. You're worthy of our hearts. You're worthy of our lives. And God, we lay it all down again this morning. We say, God, be exalted in our hearts, in our attitudes, in our thoughts. Be exalted above every name. You are worthy. You, Lord, you are worthy and you alone. God, we want to make room for you in every area of our lives. Your kingdom, your will, your agenda, your plan. As we begin our new school year, God, we say, have your way. Have your way, Lord God. Be exalted. As I was praying for this year and this morning, I just really wanna encourage you. What I was hearing the Lord say is, will you make room? Will you make room in your hearts for what God wants to do this year? Yeah, I know, I know that you know God loves you, but you don't know all that God has for you. You haven't experienced all of his love yet. There's so much more that God wants to do in us and through us. Come on, let's make room for him as we close with his last song. Here is where I lay it down Every burden, every crown This is my surrender This is my surrender Here is where I lay it down Every lie and this is my surrender. Come on, let's declare this. And I will make room for you. To do whatever you want to. To do whatever you want to. To do whatever you want to. And I will make room for you. To do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to.
thank you that you joined us together for such a time as this. We love you. We bless you. We thank you. Would you join somebody's hand or as you're able to across the auditorium this morning and those of you joining us on the internet, again, we want to just say we love you. We're so grateful that we have this connection all around the world. People, we're not waiting for the third great awakening as Andrew has declared. We're in it. We're in it. We're in it. And in order for us to be a part of the third great awakening, we each have to awaken to the life and the spirit within. Amen. So would you just begin to pray for the person that you're holding hands with? Uh, Be led whether you go right or left, but begin to pray for those that you're holding hands with this morning. And let's just release the power of God into these lives that represent the vessels of glory, the vessels of the anointing, the vessels of power and transformation. God, we bless you this morning. We thank you that all around the world, you are doing great things and doing them in us and doing them through us. You're preparing us, Lord God. Thank you for this harvest. Thank you for this harvest. Thank you for the season of planting and the season of reaping, the season of sowing and the season of going. And we bless you, Lord, for all that you've done and all that you're doing. Now, before I let you go this morning, I know we could go for another half an hour, but we don't have another half an hour for this. But can we just lift up a voice of triumph and a shout this morning together? Come on, let's just give God our praise and thank Him for what He's done. He's worthy. He's worthy. We shout our hallelujah. We raise our hallelujah. We say, God, you are worthy. You are worthy, Lord God.
Hallelujah. Give two, three people a big hug before you're seated this morning. We sure love worshiping with you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Wow, well, welcome everyone. Welcome to the very first day of Karis Bible College, the brand new year. You excited? <laughs> I tell you what, what a difference from last year. We had to live stream our worship to another room, so the second years couldn't be with the first years. Third years couldn't be with second. We had to put everyone in individual little teams in case someone got ill, that we wouldn't have to send the whole school home. Aren't you guys so thankful that that is not happening this year? <laughs> we have fun lined up for you guys today. How many of you have gone through a few hurdles getting here and you just need a real fun day? Raise your hand. Yes. All right, so let's try something. I need you guys, I, I already know you can make noise because I just heard you, but let's do this. Third years, R make some noise. Wow. That was impressive. Second years, can you beat that? <laughs> oh, wow. Now I believe that this year is our biggest first year class ever. Let me hear some noise from our first years. You guys are going to be blessed this year. Just fasten your seatbelts because good stuff is coming. Are you ready for good stuff this year? Yes. Okay, so for our returning students, do you remember last year that we had one of our students, Nathaniel Williams, who went into hospital with COVID? Okay, he struggled. He got to a point where he couldn't even move, he couldn't even walk, he couldn't talk, he could barely breathe. Where is my friend Nathaniel? Where are you today? Where is he? Where is, there he is. He is back, you guys. <laughs> I know so many of you came and asked us for updates, so thank you all for praying. Nathaniel, it is so awesome to have you back in campus. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to, um, well, let me ask you this. How many of you, raise your hands, if you have never heard Andrew Womack in person live? Oh, look at that. Wow, there's quite a few of you. Okay, so I'm going to make a new rule at Karis, okay? Hang on, I'm leaking. My eyeballs are leaking. My nose is leaking. Hang on. It's these lights. It does it to me every time I'm up here. Okay. It's very sad. I can cry on cue. Um, okay, new rule here at Karis, all right? You guys have heard of warm welcomes, right? Warm welcomes are nice, okay? But from this day forward, we are no longer going to do warm welcomes, all right? We are going to do red hot blazing on fire welcomes, all right? So I want you guys to practice this red hot blazing on fire for the founder and president of Andrew Womack Ministries and Karis Bible College, Mr. Andrew Womack. Nothing like first day of Bible school. This is awesome. Man, that's just great. You know, I felt as we were worshiping that the Lord spoke to me that anybody who went to the effort 
of being here today. I know that we have some uh, guests here like uh, parents and we've got some alumni that are back, but anybody who went to the effort to come and be here for the opening day, you may not have everything done. You may not have your accommodations. You may not have the money for registration. You may not have a lot of things, but the Lord said, if you've exhi ex exhibited enough faith to get here, that he's gonna make it work. Amen. So I want those of you that are in a bind right now, you're in a pinch, you're here, but you're just barely here. I want you to stand. We're gonna pray for you and God is gonna do a miracle to keep you here. And I believe this is a word from the Lord that you've put enough effort to be here and praise God, he's gonna work it all out. So I want you to release your faith. Let's everybody just agree with them right now. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for bringing these people here. Thank you for all of the things that they've had to go through to be here. And I know that some of them are traumatized by it. Father, we just release your peace on them right now. We release faith. We pray for our brothers and sisters and believe that you are working in them through them. We thank you that finances are coming unto them. And Father, every need that they have is meant that accommodations are coming unto them. Work is coming unto them. Father, we speak that all of the problems back home are being taken care of, that we cast the care about these things over on you. And we just speak in the name of Jesus that they are able to stay and do what you have called them to do. So Father, we agree and we release this. We speak that every single one who made it here is going to be able to stay and fulfill your will for them. So Father, we thank you. We agree and we receive that in the name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And also I know that some of you, especially those that were here last year, are probably missing all of the mask and the social distancing and the cohorts. Man, isn't this awesome to just act like we're healed? And I want to lead us all in a prayer that we're staying healthy. You know, I don't believe COVID is a big deal. I believe it exists, but you know, there was nobody that died of the flu last year. They lumped a lot of stuff in, and I believe it's been blown out of proportion. Even the CDC says that probably only 6% of the people that they uh, said died from COVID died with COVID or whatever. And so anyway, I believe it's been blown out of proportion, but it is a factor, and you're here, and we need you to stay healthy. And so we're going to release our faith right now, and I want you to believe that if you've got any sickness or anything that you are healed of it, and also exert your faith, extend it a little bit so that instead of waiting until you get sick and then start believing for health, believe that no plague comes nigh your dwelling. And don't give in to just the slightest little thing. I talked to one lady this morning out there who was in a wheelchair, she was bed fast, and she got to listening to my teachings about just resisting and she determined she was gonna get up and she forced herself to get up and she's walking today and everything's fine. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But I tell you, one of the reasons I don't get sick is because I refuse to be sick. And so let's just agree right now. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that any person who's got any sickness or any infirmity in their body, we just speak that by the stripes of Jesus, we have already been healed. Yes. And Father, we receive that. We believe that we have the same power on the inside of us that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. And we release that right now with our words. You said death and life are in the power of our words. So we speak death to all type of sickness, disease, infirmity. We command any germs in anybody here to be dead right now. We just kill those things, death to the disease, death to sickness, death to infirmity. And Father, we speak life over our bodies. 
that you are quickening our mortal bodies by the spirit that dwells in us. Thank you, Father, that we walk in divine health. And Father, we don't get seasonal sicknesses and allergies and, and things like this. Thank you that by the stripes of Jesus, you've healed all of our sickness and all of our diseases. And Father, we thank you for that. We agree and receive it and just speak health over us, over this school. Thank you, Father, that the, the people that are a part of this school, Father, are going to be healthy and that as we go into this community, people will catch our healthiness yeah. instead of us catching their sickness. Yeah. Hallelujah. So, Father, we agree and we receive that in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. I tell you, I'm excited. I, I, but those of you that have been here before have heard me say this, but I have to tell people when I'm excited because I always look the same. I don't <laughs> respond very much, but I am really excited. There's nothing like the first day of school and God has brought you here. The Lord has great plans for you. The Lord didn't bring a single one of you here to fail. And you know, I know that there's some people that, man, you've had to burn bridges behind you. You've lost uh, friends and family, have criticized you. I had one person out here say that they think they're crazy for coming here. And man, you, you've got here and uh, God did not bring you here to fail. God brought you here to change your life. And we now have 26 years worth of history of people coming to our Karis Bible College and we see people come in one way and they leave totally transformed. There's no reason that shouldn't be you. God brought you here to change you. And sometimes change is a little hard and people don't like it. Uh, I've got a teaching entitled Effortless Change and that's what this Bible college is all about. We're gonna be sharing the word with you and if you'll just open up your heart and receive it, the truth will set you free. But you are gonna have to let go. That song that we sang this morning about... Um, I forgot exactly how, you know, break down all the walls of my religion and my tradition. Some of you don't realize you've got some walls and some tradition and we're going to rub you the wrong way at times. But you know what? It's good. And so I just agree that God is going to do a great miracle in your life during your time here. Man, I, I, that's awesome. Only God knows the way that people will be changed. But, you know, we have, again, 26 years worth of experience of seeing people go all over the world. I mean, they are on every continent, they're in every nation, and you are seeds that God has brought to us. And we are going to be instilling the Word of God in you, and then you're going to go from here around the world, and I believe that you are going to be the ones that God uses in this third great awakening to just transform people's lives. And let me also say that God brought you here to be a family. And we all come from different backgrounds and we've got so many different ideas and things about things. And there's, it's okay to be different, but we need to be in unity. And we need to recognize that God has different uh, anointings for different people and stuff, but but we need to function as a unit. And I'm just praying that you will open up your heart and embrace people and uh, things that maybe are a little bit strange. It's different, but it's, it's going to be good for you. And unity is going to be one of the things that God uses in this school. Uh, again, speaking from experiences, people make some of their best friends in their entire life during this period of time. And you need to look for that. And they may not be the people who look exactly like you, talk exactly like you, dress exactly like you, and things like this. And uh, so anyway, just open up your heart and expect for God to do some awesome, awesome things. I want to share with you these verses that the Lord gave me when we started the school. And the Lord told me to start this school not for my benefit. You know, I already had a ministry going and we were doing great things. I actually did not want a Bible school because I'd seen people that graduated from Bible school and they were messes. And, and I didn't want my name associated with that. And so I resisted a Bible school and I was over in England in 1993 and the Lord spoke to me, I mean real strongly and said that if you don't raise up people 
to do what you're doing, then you're ultimately a failure. Doesn't matter how many people I reach, doesn't matter what happens in my life, I've got an expiration date, as every one of us do, do, and unless I raised up other people to do the things that God had put in me, that I was ultimately going to fail. And I got to saying, but God, how do I do this? And he just spoke to me about starting a Bible school. My first reaction was, but God, I didn't want a Bible school, and it's because I'd seen other Bible schools. And he told me a different way of doing it. And uh, anyway, we'll be expanding on this more. I'm not going to go into all the details. But uh, the Lord told me a unique way of doing it. And the purpose for starting this school was literally to make disciples. It's for you. It's not for me. I've got more than enough to do. <laughs> Amen. And so this is for you. God brought you here for you. And let me just put a little parenthetical phrase here. God did not bring you here to change us. And God knew what this school was like when he brought you here. And it's because he's got some things that he wants to teach you. And that's not to say that none of us claim that we've got it all figured out and we've got it all together. But nonetheless, God brought you here to change you. And so if we say some things that are a little bit different, I encourage you to at least, you know, give it, give it a chance. You know, think about it, pray about it and say, God, it, do I need to change in this area? Because uh, God didn't bring you here to change us. He brought you here so that the word of God could change you and help make you the person that God wants you to be. Amen. So it says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, these are those verses that the Lord gave me on June the 22nd, 1993. And he says in verse 1, 2 Timothy 2, 1, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. You know, this is one of the things about this school that we, we all are coming from a little bit different area and we have different ways of saying the same thing. But all of the ministry that you're going to be getting here is really going to emphasize the grace of God which as a general rule, the, the body of Christ today has not embraced grace. They are preaching a performance-based relationship with the Lord that puts all of the effort on you and it makes you vulnerable to condemnation and guilt because you just can't do everything right. So we are going to really emphasize the grace of God. All of us, this is one of the strong points in our life and we see people just transformed by this. And... Uh, I will venture to say that many of you have a lot more legalism law in you than what you realize. And so we will probably challenge that. But we are going to be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men. I think I could put in here, this is talking about mankind, men and women who shall be able to teach others also. And then it talks about being faithful as a soldier and as an athlete and as a farmer. But this is the verse that the Lord really used, placed on my life, and what Karis Bible College is all about is we are here to raise up faithful men and women who will be able to teach others also. Amen. This isn't about, there, again, there is no motive for us to build a huge ministry here. Our motive is to impart into you, to instill the word of God in you, to make disciples out of you so that you can go out of here and teach other people also. I've had people before ask about, well, you know, I'm not called into the five-fold ministry, so what's my point in coming to Bible college? Well, you're going to influence people in your home, in your church, in your workplace, in the places that you go and do business. We, we don't want everybody to be behind a pulpit. Man, uh, uh, we need people in the marketplace. That's the reason our third year program has all of these different tracks that we want people to be into the music realm. And man, wasn't that pra great praise and worship today? And we're going to be teaching you how to do those things. We're going to teach you how to do film and to do all this, to be into business, to be into uh, politics and into the public square and all of these kind of things, and in the ministry. And yes, there's some of you that'll be going into ministry. But the Word of God, you need to become a disciple in whatever area God has placed you. And you know, right here, I don't know how many people are in here, but close to a thousand people or so. And did you know if every one of you became the person, the full 
manifestation of the person that God wants you to be. Every one of you will go out and touch people that people behind the pulpit will never touch. You will touch people at the post office. You will touch people at the service station. You'll touch people in your family and your friends and all these different things. We need you to become the person that God wants you to be. We're looking for faithful men and women who will receive the word of God and let the word of God change you and make you the person that you're supposed to be. And man, as you go out of here, you will touch people in every segment of life. Let me also say that uh, Woodland Park is our home here and I've lived here for 25, 30 years and in this area and uh, we have a lot of people here that love us. The vast majority of the people here love us, especially the business people <laughs> and all the people that own houses, they love us. But we've got the gang of eight that dislike us and say things about us. And they're always looking for something. And we've had people criticize the way you drive through town, the way you don't leave tips, the way you do things. You need to recognize that even while you're in training, you are, you are being a witness for the Lord. And I just encourage you to, you know, take the things that you're receiving and go out and just be a blessing to people, especially when you're wearing a vest that says CBC on the back or you got your lanyard on. You not only are representing the Lord, you're representing me and I get flack sometimes. So, <laughs> man, we want you to go out and be a witness. But anyway, we are looking for people that we can train up and help you to become what God wants you to be. God's never made a piece of junk. God never ordained a single person to be a failure. That's a huge statement right there. There's a lot of people that honestly think that there's only a few people that God places a call upon their life and that they have something special to do. And the vast majority of people just see themselves as just a person who you just live and, and die and you go through life and you muddle through and do the best that you can. God did not create any of you for that. God created every one of you to be special. Now, you're gonna, not going to be special in the way that I am or the way that somebody else is here, but you've got your own degree. You got your own place to be. You are carrying miracles for other people. And if you don't rise up to your full potential, other people won't get the miracle that God has for them. And so every one of you, God has something awesome for your life. And we are here to help you discover what that is, to equip you so that you can go out and teach others also. And it just becomes a ripple effect. Some of you have heard me say this before, but the body of Christ, I believe one of the major mistakes in the body of Christ is that we have started making converts instead of disciples. I just read a survey. Barna came out with a brand new survey this week and 60% of millennials who claim to be born again, these are not people that don't believe in the Lord, but 60% of born again millennials that's 18 through 36, I think, or something like that. 60% of them believe Jesus is just a way to the Lord, that Muhammad and Buddha are also ways to the Lord. That's terrible. That's terrible. And these are people who claim to be born again. I'm telling you that our world is screwed up. The church world is screwed up. They aren't taking a stand. They aren't speaking out on things. God has brought you here to equip you and to make you into the person he wants you to be. And again, whether you ever get behind the pulpit, whether you ever get on television is not the issue, but each one of you influence people. There are people in your world that I will never reach, that other people will never reach. And he's brought you here to make you into the person that he wants you to be and to reveal to you what his purpose for your life is. You can't fulfill God's purpose accidentally. It doesn't sovereignly come to pass. It's not up to fate or chance and you're just, you know, like a pinball that you pull back the handle and propel this thing and it just bounces off of things, whatever happens, and you have no control over your life. If you don't know where you're going, you'll never know if you get, get there. You need to have a purpose and God has a purpose for every single one of you and one of the reasons that he brought you here is to help reveal that purpose. If you already know what your purpose is, then it's to help equip you and to make you the, 
a better instrument so that he can use you even better. But God has a plan for your life and you have to let him work those things in you and prepare you and that's the reason that you are here. God brought you here to make you into the person that he wants you to be. You will not be complete when you graduate. You ha it's a continual process. You're still growing until the day you go to be with the Lord, but you should be a long ways down the road from where you are right now. And there's going to be changes. And I believe that many of you are going to look back on today and you're going to think, you know, in two years or three years, you're going to look back and think, man, am I a different person. Some of you, your family won't even recognize you. Some of you, you won't recognize yourself. And so this is the purpose. But the church has been making converts and they've been getting people to pray a prayer so that they won't go to hell and hopefully they were sincere and they really meant it and they will go to heaven. But while they're here, they still have all this screwed up thinking. And so you've got to get your mind straightened out. And the thing that does that is the renewing of your mind by the word of God. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God that you present your body. That's verse 1, but that's a great one. That you present your body a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable, which is your reasonable service. And verse 2 says, and be not conformed to this world, but be thou transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The word transform is a Greek word metamorpho. It's where we get the word metamorphosis from, where a caterpillar spins a cocoon and comes out a butterfly. I believe you are going to get that kind of transformation in your life by the renewing of your mind through the word of God. The word of God is what sets you free. Jesus said, John chapter 8, verse 31, he says, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed, in verse 32 says, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. But it's only the truth you know that sets you free. What you don't know is killing you. What you don't know, and I'm gonna say some things here that, uh, you know, just put your seatbelt on. We will be explaining these things. Don't bail on the very first day. But it's what you don't know that's making you sick. It's not, a, it's not a disease. You know, the scripture says that no plague will come nigh our dwelling. Only with our eyes will we see and behold the reward of the wicked. That's a promise. Psalms chapter 91. It's a promise. Don't raise your hand on this. But how many of you get sick? I can guarantee you most people, most Christians get sick and yet the Bible says no plague will come nigh your dwelling. Which is it? It's what you don't know that's making you sick and susceptible to sickness. You know, in uh, Exodus chapter 23, I believe it's verse 25, it says, and he will bless your bread and water and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. And the word take and away, take, Sickness away, taken away are the exact same Hebrew word and it literally means to turn off. I will turn off sickness, turn off in the midst of thee. Did you know Jesus walked in this earth and he bore our sicknesses on his body on the tree but during his 33 years before he was on the cross, I don't believe Jesus got sick because there wasn't any receptors in him for sickness. He was holy. Sin made us susceptible to sickness, but through Jesus, we have this promise that he will turn off sickness on the inside of you. You don't have to get sick. Thank you for those couple of amens. And there's some of you that just, it's, I'm only human. I get sick. I'm not only human. One third of me is wall to wall Holy Ghost. You don't have to be sick. You got the same power that raised Jesus Christ on the inside of you and you do not have to be sick. It's been 53 years since I've been sick. I don't get sick. I don't believe in being sick. You can't make me sick. And it's what you don't know about prosperity that's hurting you. 
There are some of you that stood, and I imagine many of the things that you're dealing with are probably financial, and I love you, and God loves you, but it's what you don't know about prosperity that's put you in the bind that you're in. That's not to say that God hates you, that he's mad at you or anything, but I'm saying that you don't have to live in lack. You can live in prosperity. God wants every one of you to prosper, not just old people. Young people can prosper. Every one of you can prosper. But if you, if you aren't prospering right now, it says in Proverbs chapter 23, verse seven, as he thinks in his heart, so is he. If you aren't prospering right now, guess why? It's because of the way you think. It's not because you don't have a job. You couldn't find a job here. It's not because of the economy and the, uh, the COVID stuff that we had to take off. It's not because of any of these things. Did you know our ministry prospered more last year than it has ever prospered in the history of the ministry? And we are nearly 20% ahead of last year. You can prosper. The Bible says that he would supply all of your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. He doesn't base his supply for you upon the U.S. economy. But if you don't know that, if you haven't renewed your mind, if you are letting the attitudes of this world affect you, then if you're struggling financially, it's because of what you don't know. Your life is going the direction of its dominant thought. If you're having relation problems, I guarantee you it's, it's based on what you don't know. Now again, you can't guarantee that every person is going to like you. Jesus was the epitome of love. He was love manifested in the flesh and yet he had people that hated him. And so this doesn't mean that every person will love you, but you don't have to be affected by it. You can walk in joy and peace. I've got thousands of people that hate me. I've got blogs that say I'm the worst person. I've got one that says I'm the most dangerous man in America. And I've got a lot of bad things that are said about me, but you know what? It doesn't keep me up at night. I slept over eight hours last night really well. And it doesn't bother me. You, what happens out here does not have to affect you if you understand and know some things. It's the truth that sets you free. And I'm just speaking that physically, financially, emotionally, uh, in every area of your life, the truth is what transforms you and sets you free. And God brought you here, not because you're perfect, but because there's things that need to be done. We're going to be sharing the word of God with you. It's going to challenge you in some of your thoughts, some of your concepts, but that's why God brought you here. Amen. So you need to open up your heart and get ready to receive because, um, man, I believe this is going to transform you. It's going to make disciples. And let me also go back to this. I was saying that the church has been making converts. They're so concerned about getting people to heaven, which, uh, praise God, I am too. I want to take everybody to heaven with me. But did you know that if we make disciples, we will actually make a bigger impact and bring more people to heaven than if you're just making converts? And I got this example when I first got really turned on to the Lord, 1968. I started witnessing to everything that moved and uh, I got drafted and went to Vietnam. When I got back in 71, uh, I started uh, witnessing to people, divided the city of Arlington, Texas up into sections and we knocked on 100 doors a day. I witnessed, I'd go in and when we would eat, I'd stand up and bless everybody's food in the whole place and say, you need your food blessed too. And I'd try and witness to them. I'd grab people coming out of a 7-Eleven store and say, you need to get born again and I was obnoxious, but I, I witnessed to anything and everything that moved. But did you know that after I'd lead these people to the Lord, I'd say, is there any reason you don't want to pray with me? And there's not very many people that would just say, yeah, I want to go to hell. Leave me alone. So they'd pray with me to get me off their back or feeling sorry for me, or I don't know what all the reasons were, but I'd go back and see some of those same people that I'd prayed with six months before. And there was zero evidence of them being changed. There was no change in their life. They still had the same problems. They didn't love the Lord. I think all they did was pray a prayer just to get me off their back. And uh, I became really confused and especially the verse in John chapter 15 where Jesus said, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit 
and that your fruit should remain. And the Lord spoke to me, your fruit isn't remaining. This isn't really godly fruit. And I became really confused about that. And so I, I met up with some people called the Navigators. The Navigator headquarters is located down in Colorado Springs. And I met up with them and they started teaching me about discipleship. And one of the examples that they used was that if you were to take a grain of wheat and put it on a checkerboard square, you know, there's 64 squares on a, on a checkerboard. And if you put one grain of wheat there and then you doubled it on the second square and then you doubled it again, there'd be four grains of wheat on the third square and then eight and then 16, 32, 64, etc. And you just go on. Did you know by the time you got to the 64th square, you would have enough wheat to cover the continent of India three feet deep. And most people think, oh, that can't be. Well, if you only had half that on the 63rd square, you'd double it. This is what discipleship does. If you take a man who could lead a thousand people a year to the Lord, that would be tremendous. I don't know anybody who does that. But if you led a thousand people a year to the Lord, did you know at the end of 35 years, a typical length of ministry, you'd have 35,000 Christians, which I bet you there's probably 35,000 Christians in Colorado Springs, certainly up in the Denver area. And yet it hadn't changed the culture because they aren't disciples. They're Christian in name only, but they don't vote Christian. They'll pray thy kingdom come and then go vote for somebody who's for abortion, for transgenderism for everything that the Bible is against. 35,000 people won't change a, a large city. But if you took the same person and instead of them making uh, converts, they made a disciple and they only led one person to the Lord every six months. But then they took that person, shut them up and just poured into them and taught them the word of God and discipled them. At the end of six months, you'd only have two disciples versus 500 converts by the other method. At the end of one year, that each one of them go out and reach another person and then disciple them. You'd have four disciples versus 1,000 Christians. But if you just keep multiplying this out, did you know at the end of 12 and a half years, you would have more disciples than the population of the world, more than 7.2 billion disciples, if you just took people and discipled them, got them to where they could receive and operate in these things. This is what Jesus said in John chapter 8, verse 31. He was talking to people who believed on him. It says, then spoke he to those who believed on him. If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. That word indeed means in truth or, or actuality. In other words, there are people who claim the name of Christ but if they were arrested for being a Christian, there wouldn't be enough evidence to convict them. <laughs> they're as sick as the people that don't know the Lord. They're as poor. They're as fearful. They're as bothered. They're as depressed. They're discouraged. Man, I heard about a church service where somebody died. They called 911 and they took out half the crowd before they found the dead person. That's pretty dead. <laughs> so there's a lot of Christians that are Christian in name only. And because of it, they not only aren't reproducing, but they're actually turning people off. How many of you have ever heard somebody say, I'd have been a Christian if I hadn't have meant one? <laughs> or they talk about all of the hypocrites down there at church. You know, Mahatma Gandhi, the guy who led India to independence from Britain, 750 million people in India. His... Uh, I forgot son or grandson, the one that uh, used to call him Bop Boo. They had a famous picture of him. He was in one of my meetings and he told me this and he said that uh, when he was exiled, when Mahatma Gandhi was exiled to India, that he started reading the Bible. And after reading the New Testament, he determined that Jesus was the Son of God. And he went to a Presbyterian church to make a profession of faith and to become a Christian. And because he was a black man, these white Presbyterian missionaries would not let him in the church. And he said, I would have been a Christian if I hadn't have meant one. And he went on and he influenced 750 million people. And he said on his own that he used the teachings of Jesus 
about passive resistance is what inspired him, but he didn't become a Christian because uh, so-called Christian turned him off. He was maybe a convert, but he wasn't a disciple. He wasn't representing God properly. And because of that, an entire nation could have been led to the Lord, not only into independence, but to the Lord. And they missed that because of people who were not disciples. I'm telling you, this is the critical need that we have in the body of Christ today is to make disciples. And the church as a whole is not doing it. Now, I am for the church. I'm a part of the church. I'm not against the church, amen. I believe we need to fix the leaks from inside, not outside. So uh, I am a part of the church. We got Pastor Mark Coward here with us. We got other pastors here with us. I am for the church, but as a whole, the church isn't making disciples. You are not going to become a disciple one hour a week. It's impossible. It can't be done. What are you going to do with the rest of your life? Well, sad to say, today with the technologies and the communication that we've got, you are going to be inundated with unbelief. We pay lots of bucks to have it on our cell phone and piped into our house and we listen to all of the doubt and the unbelief and all the bad news and you are going to be bombarded with hundreds of hours of that stuff and try and counter it with one hour service in a church is not going to get it done. You cannot make disciples the way most churches are going about it. And that is the job of the church. And so, did you know that this Bible college wouldn't even exist if the church was doing what God called us to do? You know, the church is better equipped to do this than what I am. Like right now, I don't know how many st students we're going to have, but at least 700, maybe up to 1,000 students this year. We can't have as much personal relationship with you as a pastor could have with people in his church and disciple them and to make uh, disciples and stuff. But because the churches aren't doing it, God raises up ministries like this. This ministry would not exist if the church was doing its job. But this, is, this ministry exists to be a disciple-making machine. We are going to share with you things that I guarantee you are going to transform your life if you'll receive it. You have to cooperate. It's not magic. You can't just sit in that seat and it automatically work. But if you will open up your heart, if you will hunger after this, if you'll say, God, I want to be the person that you want me to be, you brought me here to change me, to reveal yourself to me, to prepare me for what's beyond Bible college. And if you will open up your heart and receive, we are going to give you the equivalent. In just the first two years, we will give you the equivalent of 22 years worth of church attendance. And there is a saturation effect. You know, you can take a sponge and dip it under the water real quickly and pull it out and it'll get wet around the edges but it, it won't penetrate. If that sponge was dried out, it'll still be hard in the center and you can actually break that sponge and things. But if you take it and just saturate it, put it in the exact same environment that you did just you know, momentarily, but if you'll put it there and leave it there, it'll saturate. It'll go all the way to the core. And this is what's going to happen in Bible college. You are going to be saturated. You're going to be getting, this is like drinking from a fire hose. I actually sat in on one of Dwayne Sheriff's teachings a couple of years back and I got enough out of that one teaching that I meditated on that for four or five days for nearly a week. That's all I studied was that one hour and he had four hours in that one day. How in the world do you assimilate all of this? It's really going to be more than what any one person can handle but yet if you'll open up your heart, God will give you the things that will apply to you and it will change you. But you've got to open up your heart. You've got to receive. So this is why God brought you here. This is why we exist, is to make disciples. We have a command from the Lord to take the things that God has spoken to us and put them on the inside of faithful men and women so that you can go out and do the work of the ministry. You know, when I first got started, man, I wanted to pray for everything that moved. I prayed for people and stuff, and I still enjoy doing that. But you know, now I would rather teach you and see you pray and see you see somebody raised from the dead than for me to do it. You know, we had a little baby that was put right here 
in this spot in 2019. And there were seven of us on the platform and Mike and Carrie were there and uh, Daniel was there and Carly, Tara Des. And anyway, I was here and I stood here. They took this baby and I think Carly was holding it. Daniel had his hand on the baby's chest and the baby died during the service, 14 month old baby. And anyway, I was praying with them, but I let them do the praying. And I mean, in just a few moments, this baby's arms were down and it was not breathing. And all of a sudden it just jerked and came alive and its heart started pounding. And this baby was raised from the dead right here. But I would rather see them do that than to have me do it. Because I've seen people raised from the dead. I've seen my own son raised from the dead. My wife raised from the dead. I praise God for the power of God, but my whole motive, I, my whole life is geared towards trying to make disciples, people that can go do those things themselves. It's one thing for me to believe that no plague will come nigh my dwelling and that I don't get sick and that you can't make me sick. But I'd rather see you get to that place. I'd rather see you walk in that. And that's what we're doing. We're here trying to instill these truths in you. There is no magic formula. It's just a personal relationship with the Lord. The, the number one thing is the Bible, the truth. God's word is truth. And I promise you, we're going to be sharing things with you that will literally transform your life. But you've got to open up your heart and receive it. Amen. Amen. You know, every year we see people that come in and I've, I've literally, during my teaching, seen some people just get so blessed and excited that they can't sit still. They bounce in their chairs. I have other people cry. I have other people that are just transformed. And in between them will be a person that falls asleep. <laughs> and I can guarantee you, I cannot speak all of those different things out of my mouth at one time. It's not just the seed that's coming out of my mouth. It's the soil that it's landing on. And you have 100% control over your heart. Many of you haven't exercised it and that's one of the things we're going to be teaching you but you have the choice whether you become good seed, whether you hunger and thirst for righteousness and want these things. It's up to you and I'm just encouraging you to, this is a miracle. God has done something special here and I'm not saying that for any of my benefit. I'm just saying it to glorify the Lord that there, there is something special that's happening right here. We have people get healed coming on the property we see lives transformed. I talked to a number of people before the service today and they were saying that, man, they were, just couldn't wait to get back here. They just love it here. The presence of God. We've had people come to our meetings and talk about even the people that are cleaning the bathrooms are so happy. <laughs> God's doing something special here. There's an anointing on this place. He brought you here to transform your life, but you've got to cooperate. He won't force it on you. He will let you sit there and receive nothing. It's totally up to you. So I just encourage you to open up your heart. And you know, the Bible says that the eyes of the Lord, First, uh, Second, Second Chronicles um, 6, 19, I believe it is, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth, seeking to show himself strong in behalf of those who are perfect in his sight. Perfect here doesn't mean that you don't have any problems, that you're doing everything just right. But it's talking about, the NIV, I think, says those who are completely His. And if you will just open up your heart, God is here. He's, he brought you here to affect change. And He's looking. You know, your response ought to be, God, don't look any further. I'm the one. Man, if you... If, Anybody, out of a thousand people, God, I'm the one that wants you more than anybody else. I want change. I want these truths. That ought to be your response. And when God sees that kind of response, he'll pass over everybody in this school to find you, to get to you. You can put a draw on the things of God. So I'm just encouraging you to make that decision. And man, receive what God brought you here for. Make sure that you get 100% of it. Father, right now, I pray for all of my brothers and sisters, and we thank you that you've brought us all to this place. 
I thank you for all of the things that you've done to, to make Caris what it is today, to provide these facilities. Thank you for our partners who've paid for all of this. Father, we thank you and just praise you for the opportunity to be here. And Jesus, we recognize that you are the one who's made all of this possible. We welcome the presence of the Holy Spirit. I'm praying that you would open up people's hearts that right now they would be saying, look no further. God, here am I. I want your complete, perfect will for my life. And Father, we just dedicate these next two, three years to you and believe that, Father, you are going to transform us, that we will be transformed by the renewing of our mind and we will prove the good, the acceptable, and the perfect will of God. We give you praise for that in advance by faith, believing that, Father, this is what your will is. This is why you brought us here. And so we agree and we receive that in the name of Jesus. Amen. You all agree with that? Praise the Lord. Are you guys up next? What are we doing? Oh, Claire is going to give them a good intro. I wouldn't give a good intro. Is that what you're saying? Oh, no, you do it way no, better. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's all right. <laughs> Have you noticed that Claire's uh, accent isn't American? Well, when I try to talk like all y'all, I sound like this. That's the only American accent I can do. I tr I've tried every other American accent, but it just it comes out like this. <laughs> Andrew, thank you. Thank She's you from so South much. South Africa. That's we right. appreciate yes. it. Yes. Tell you what, I'm sitting here and I'm so stirred up because I remember being in school. I was in an extension school and we got all our teachings mostly through a DVD. And I tell you what, it doesn't matter. It, do, it was so powerful. And I remember getting nugget after nugget. So I'm. I'm a little bit jealous, guys, because, you know, I want to go back to school and do it all over again. <laughs> so soak it up and enjoy every moment. So um, we have no doubt that Andrew hears from the Lord, right? Yes. And every time the Lord downloads a new project into Andrew's heart, he passes it on to our, I like to call them our superman and superwoman, because they keep this ministry running like it is and growing and getting better. So can we have another fantastic red hot on fire welcome for our presidents, Mike and Kerry Pickett. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, that red hot stuff is awesome. Just want to let you guys all know. You guys hear me okay? Just want to let you guys all know that that one person is me. I want God more than anybody else in this room. <laughs> I hope you guys just said, nah, in your hearts, right? <laughs> Amen. Because, uh, I mean, that's really what we're all here for, guys, right? To receive everything that we possibly can. I, when I get to heaven, I want to know that I left it all on the table. <laughs> Amen. I didn't, I didn't leave anything behind. I left all my effort, and I went 100%. For Jesus. And I'll tell you something, if we all have that attitude, we're going to see this world set right side up. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, we are excited to um, welcome all of our first year students. How many of you second and third year students are new on campus this year? This is your first time on campus. Wow. That is a lot. Awesome. Well, welcome to campus. We are so excited. Um, like Claire said, Mike and I get to be the, uh, have the privilege of being the vice presidents here in the Ministry of Caris Bible College and International Operations. I am the director here of the Woodland Park campus, so we are so excited to have you this school year. We've been preparing all summer long for you guys, and so this is an exciting day for all the staff as well. One of the things I'd like to do is I'd like to um, introduce, and I won't be able to do it all by name, but I'd like all of our teachers, any of our adjunct teachers or full-time teachers that are in the room, could you please stand? Any of our coordinators or directors of our third-year schools, could you guys please stand? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
We just want to say thank you so much, teachers. You guys are the heartbeat of the school. We just thank you so much for all that you are investing into the students this year. We believe that God's got great things through you. There's a ton of adjunct faculty and teachers that are also going to be here throughout the year. Third year students, you're going to have so many instructors that you're going to get to meet new this year. We're really excited. Also, can I have any, and I know some of these same people are going to stand up, but can I have all of our staff in the room? Any of our staff that have been working? I know we have a ton out in the hallways, but can any staff in the ministry stand up? AWM, Karis, staff. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, we want to recognize you guys as staff. You guys are the ministers in this house. We just thank you so much for all that you do to keep this ministry going, all the gifts and talents and, and anointings that you bring as the body so that we can do this together. And I'm so proud of you that you guys are working in the ministry, but you're also studying in school, first year, second year, third year. So we just want to say thank you for that. So we got a great family. And like Andrew said, we are going to be family this year. And so we encourage you to get to know each other other. If there's new faces, don't just be around those people that you knew last year, but uh, greet each other, love on each other, because as much as God has things from, uh, from the teachers to you guys, he also has you guys here to minister to one to another, and that's going to be awesome. Amen. So Carrie and I just want to share some things really briefly, briefly with you this morning, just about this upcoming year, and what a challenge that we want, and a challenge that we want to, uh, to give to you all. Again, just talking about what the Lord has for you here. And some of the things we're going to share, you know, I understand that we're preaching to the choir, that you guys are the radical ones, that you guys are the ones who are here in the, in the early part of the day, not the, not the end of the day, that you, guys are, that you guys are really pressing into the Lord. And I want to challenge you, just like Andrew said, that God has more for you. Amen? Amen? This, is a, this is an incredible time of preparation, but this is not going to be the rest of your life. That this is that, just that time of preparing, stirring some things up in your heart because you have a very unique and special calling. And as you begin to step into that, you know something? How many people know that the world needs your calling today more than ever before? I mean, we're seeing some things unprecedented that we never thought we'd, that, that I never thought I'd see happening this quickly, especially coming out of, the, of a previous season that we're in right now. But that's okay because the enemy is working hard because he knows his time is short. And so... But what's really amazing about it is that no matter what is, is pushing back against us, how many people know that we already have the victory in Christ? What's, what's really amazing is that there's nothing that you and I are going to encounter that Jesus has not already overcome. And as we go back to the Word, and, and, and as Andrew said, as you discover all that you are in the Word, as you put that first as your priorities, you discover that this Word of God actually is the inheritance that Jesus left for you and I to walk in victory. We're going we're gonna to see some amazing things. Man, guys, we're going to see the blind healed. You're going to see the blind healed. See, we're going to see the, the deaf here. We're going to see the lame walk. We're going to see people who are sick recover. We're going to see some awesome, we're, as, even as Andrew mentioned before, we're going to see the dead raised. And that's not only the physical dead, but that's also the spiritually dead. And that's going to happen as we continue to lay down our lives and receive everything that the Lord has for us during this time. You know, one of the things, I remember when I was in Bible school, so I graduated in 1999. Um, I was in the fourth uh, class of Karis Bible College. I came when I was uh, three years old. And uh, so 20, 22 years ago, uh, I graduated. And I will tell you guys this, that, you know, I remember one of the teachers said this. He says, you know, when you come to Bible school, do not just listen with ears for yourself. He said, listen for those you're going to minister to someday. And that really impacted me in, when I was sitting there as a student because, again, this word has so much power. Just like what Andrew was saying, you're going to get discipled. There's going to be truths. I was talking to second-year students this morning and third-year students. There's continued revelations that he started last year that he wants to continue. Amen? And the goal is, is that we remain teachable. And that we remain humble in this. So when we say humble, to come to school and say, Lord, I am eager. Here I am. My heart is teachable. I guarantee that it's not just going to transform you. It's going to transfer, transform every person that God's going to bring to you. And even people, nations, 
through languages, areas that you have never yet even imagined God has prepared beforehand before you. Amen. That is why we have to be diligent. I will say when, as, as we're in this place, and this is a place of freedom, this is a place of grace, this is a place of learning, this is a place where we make mistakes, we stand up, we learn, we grow, but it's also a place of diligence. That we finish what we started. Amen. Amen. And the devil's going to tell you that it's okay to quit halfway. The devil's going to tell you it's okay to be distracted. He's going to tell you that it's okay to not really pay attention because you've already heard that before. No, we want to come with our hearts eager. We want to come with our hearts humble because the things that you say, oh, maybe you've heard something. Oh, yeah, I've heard that. Oh, yeah, I've heard Andrew share that. Oh, yeah, I've heard Gary uh, uh, Wendell say that before. I've heard all these teachers say this before. No, God has something for you today. Amen. Amen. And so I would encourage you as, you're, as you have ears to hear that you're saying, Lord, help me hear in a way that I would be able to articulate the same truth out. Amen. So when you're writing notes, don't just write notes for yourself. Write notes because those are the things you're going to preach from someday. Amen. So you're diligent in how you listen and you're diligent in how you become a student of the word. Don't just be hearers of the word. Become a student of the word. Because Lord, my, I want Holy Spirit you to lead me and guide me and open up these truths for me today. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So it all depends on your attitude and how you do it. Amen. If you're just like whatever, whenever, however, or no, I'm going to get all I have for me today. I don't care what my emotions are saying. I don't care what tiredness is saying. I don't care what my bladder is telling me right now. I am going to be focused. Hallelujah. Because as Andrew was teaching, I just kept thinking, I need to go to the bathroom. Okay. So you determine your focus. Amen. You just determine. I'm not going to be checking emails and Facebook and texting somebody across the room. Except for, oh my gosh, this is so awesome. Okay, so <laughs> you determine the attitude in which you receive. Because you can have an attitude of like, well, I don't know. I mean, that maybe is for my neighbor. I don't know if that's for me. Or you can have the attitude of like, that's not for me, but that's definitely for the neighbor. <laughs> now have an attitude that this word is for you and it is for you today. Yes. Amen. How many people brought their Bibles today? It's Bible school. Bible I'm just going to let you know, just tip. <laughs> kind of good to bring your Bible every day. It is the only textbook we use around here. Amen. So if you're not bringing your Bible, you're not bringing your textbook, so bring it, okay? Open your Bibles to Philippians chapter 3. We're going we're gonna to start off in verse 12. Guys, these are some powerful scriptures. It says this. It says, not as though, or it says, brethren, I... I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. I'm sorry, I'm verse 12. I, I, I skipped to 13. So, not as though as I already attained, neither were already perfect, but I follow after if I, I may be, that I may be apprehended for that which, which I was apprehended in Christ Jesus. I apologize, my iPad, my kids dropped my iPad. So, it's all splintered. So, he's so, seen, seen dimly through yes, a broken glass. That's right. Verse number 13 says, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. How many of you want to know the one thing that Paul did? This is, the, this is what, what Paul says, this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which, behind, which are behind and reaching forth into those things which are before, I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. How many people know that there's three different aspects to that, past, future, and then present? So in the past, he says, I'm going to forget all those things behind. How many people in here have a past? How many people actually lived before they came to Karis? <laughs> you know something? We've all, had, we've all had incredible successes. We've all had great mistakes. You know, you know what God says? You know what Paul said about that? He said, I'm going to forget those things. Because even if I had those great successes, yeah, I can refer back to them, but God's going to outdo them in the future. And if, I, and if I've made those mistakes in the past, it doesn't make any difference anymore because if I'm, I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says, if any man be in Christ, he's a brand new creature. Amen. And he said, we get to behold all things that have become new. So now we get to forget the past. And, it says, and then, then it goes on to say this. It says, uh, pressing forward. 
and reaching forth unto those things which are before. How many people know that God has a great future in store for you? Amen. You know something? It's awesome to know that God has a great future in store for us. How many people are actively pursuing that future? And I know, again, like I said, I know we're preaching to the choir because you're all, you're all people who are here at Karis Bible College, laying down your lives, discovering all the things that the word says about you. But I want to let you know that your future is even greater than you can imagine. Amen. And you know something? If you will lay everything at the foot of the cross, if you will lay it all down, you're going to find some incredible things. Trust me, Carrie and I know we had the opportunity to, to, to go over to Russia, to see lives transformed, to see people delivered of AIDS, to see people come out of wheelchair, to see cancer fall off of people like it's nothing, to see, to see those deaf ears open, those blind eyes open, to see so many different things happen. It was incredible. And guys, I'm just a prison guard. That's and I'm just a farm girl. So if you know, we can do it. Amen. All you have to do is trust the Lord and say, Lord, I'm going to take the limits. I'm going to take the limits off of you in my life. That's no longer about me who's living, but now it's about you living through me. You know, Paul said in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, he said, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen. What a powerful, powerful statement. And you and I have this opportunity, this incredible opportunity that's being opened wide that we're going to have these incredible instructors coming up here. And, and I forgot how many hours of instruction. I believe it's over 1,000 hours, isn't it? There's over 1,000 hours of experience that are going to be pouring into your life. Years. 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 I'm sorry, over 1,000 years <laughs> of experience, not hours, that are going to be pouring into your lives over this next one, two, and three years. So my question is, are you already full? Or are you ready to get all that God has for you? And I know, guys, this is really exciting on the first day of Bible school that we're all coming together. But I want to challenge you not to let this excitement wane. Because the more you get to know God, the more exciting he gets. The more amazing that you discover that he actually is, the more promises that you can actually see are living on the inside of him. And I want to encourage you again, not to limit God, but to really re remove those restraints that you have placed upon him. Forget those things which are behind. Press toward the mark of the high calling that's in Christ Jesus, your Amen. Lord. Because that calling is just absolutely incredible. You're so hot when you teach. <laughs> no, I love She does this every year. It's, and every year. Man, the anointing is awesome, isn't it? See, see that's the thing. I know it's not me. <laughs> Now, guys, I'll just tell you, when you, when you get excited about the Lord, when you let God do a work within your heart, when you let him truly, like what we talked about here today, when you truly surrender and let him take the reins of your life, you know, so many times we want to have control and growth at the same time. Amen. And I'm telling you right now, it's hard to grow when you're telling God what, what and when and where he can do his work. Amen? So I'm going to encourage you, that, in, in, and I'm going to even say this second and third year, don't think that, that, that your growth has stopped, that you're just going on to the next year. Amen? And I'm going to challenge you to say, Lord, hear the reins. Why? Because he's prepared good things beforehand to those who love God. I was already sharing with third year. Listen, the reason that we can share, the reason we can hand the reins over to God and say, Lord, here's my life, is because when you hand them to him, you're handing it to the person of love. Right? So many times we're like, well, God, I don't know what you want me to do. And hey, you know what? Let's negotiate and let's talk about this. And let's determine, you know, do we really want to pay this much? Do we really want to obey that now? Maybe later, Lord. I'm telling you right now, if God's leading you and he's speaking to you, and as he speaks to you in school, to let go of certain mentalities, to let go of certain habits and traditions, as we break some of that religion off of us this year, I want to tell you that he's doing it because he loves you. He's not doing it because he's like, well, finally, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bust you up. No. He's saying, listen, I love you. And I'm going to take away everything that 
hinders you from being all that I've called you to be and all that you want to be. Because there's times, listen, you're sitting there listening to worship, you're sitting to the word and you feel it inside of your heart. You feeling the spirit of God at work. You feel he's alive. You feel he's saying yes, yes. And your mind's gonna be like, well, someday. Listen, as you underline things in your Bible and as you write things in your note, notes, it is not a tomorrow gospel. Right, amen. You know what? Tomorrow I will raise the dead, cleanse the lepers. You know, someday. Guys, this is not a someday Bible school. You are here for such a time as this. That means God's got work in you and going to do through you and going to do on you this year, this season, today. So when you walk through those doors or when you drive up on campus and you're saying, this is my place called there, right? Okay, here is where you're going to hear things from the Lord and you're going to get stirred up. But guys, it doesn't stay here. When you drive off this campus, you're only here four hours in the day. Maybe if you come early, maybe if you stay late, please, you're not supposed to sleep here, okay? (laughs) God's got housing for you in Jesus' name. It's not here. It's out there. (laughs) But I'll say this. When you leave here, as you drive off campus, you're saying, okay, Holy Spirit, now help me to apply it today. Help me to press into this. I don't want to just to be a hearer of the word and deceive myself. See, the devil doesn't even need to deceive you if you just think that just listening is all there is to Bible school. But it's now being a doer of it. Saying, okay, Lord, now how do I apply this to my life today? How do I apply this to my finances today? How do I apply this to my emotions and my faith today? How am I going to let these words that I heard today become words of life? I speak out over my situations. And then I speak to my neighbors. Because I don't want us to be all hallelujah, God bless you here. And then out there we're rude to our neighbors and we're rude to our roommates. Well, your family, you just have to love me. No, we're letting this word change us. So that they go, something is different about you. Amen? We don't want to be just hearers of the word. We want to be doers of the word. And again, no one can be a doer of the word for you. That's, the o- that, that's what you can do. That's the only thing you can do. Your pastor, your mate, your spouse, the friends that you make here cannot say amen for you. They cannot be a doer of the word for you. That is the unique privilege and honor you get as a child of God yourself. And so we're encouraging when we talk about press in to lay hold of, grab a hold of these things, make them your own. It is not just between 8 and 12. For those of you that are coming to Saturday school or those of you who are coming to night school, it is not just in the hours that you are in this building. It is supposed to be something that gets ignited in you for the rest of your life. Amen. So determine you are not a first year, second year, third year student. You're going to die an alumni. (laughs) Hallelujah. You're going to finish this race strong for the rest of your life. Hallelujah. Because you're going to keep this activity of the word and discipleship and growth as part of your character, part of your personality, part of your hunger, part of your testimony of who you are. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm going to say amen for me. You know what I love is when the teachers are up here teaching, they're getting excited and they're getting encouraged and they're getting passionate. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is ministering to us while we're teaching. So if you don't get blessed, I guarantee every single teacher in this room is going to change and get better because we know that the word will work. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I really want to encourage you during this year is to make yourself vulnerable to the word of God. You know, and when I say that, I mean, open yourself up to it. Allow the word of God to change the way you think. You know, oftentimes believers do not allow the Bible to influence the way they think. You know, it, it's, it's sad because what they'll do is they'll, they'll pull different scriptures and try to adapt those scriptures to their lifestyle. I believe that God wants to live us at such, you and I to live at such a point of sacrifice where we're so vulnerable to the word of God that as we see something in the word that confronts the way, they, the way that, we're con- that we're right now living in this moment, that we change. 
that we transform, that we're, that we're mature enough to say, the Lord, not my will, but your will be done. Whatever you want of me, I'm going to be transformed. I'm going to, I'm going to receive every sing, single thing that you possibly have for me through this word, through your word. You know, in, um, in Ephesians chapter 1, I, I, in, uh, I believe it's in verses 13 and 14, um, I love these scriptures because it talks about truly what, it, what the inheritance that Jesus gave us. It says this in verse 13, it's talking about in Christ. It says, in whom ye also trusted after ye heard the word of faith, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also ye, ye believed you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest, and that means down payment or guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. You know what's amazing about that? is that the Holy Spirit is the down payment for the inheritance that you and I have received. What, what, what an incredible picture that truly is, that you and I get to experience that inheritance while we're here on earth. You know, oftentimes believers believe that, you know what, you know what when I get to heaven, then I'm not going to be sick anymore, then I'm not going to be infirmed anymore, I won't be depressed anymore, all these different things, and that's true, but why wait till heaven? Why not experience those things right now? Because that's our inheritance. The word of God is our inheritance. And most of the time, we just, we just put up with things here on this earth. You know, you're going to be sick as long as you put up with it. You're going to be depressed as long as you put up with it. You're going to be led by the world and its mentalities as long as you put up with it. It's time that we said no more. It's time that we allowed the word to change the way we think. We become vulnerable to the word. We become, we, to the word, we, come, we become hard to the world and everything that the world throws at us just bounces off of us. It's like, yeah, whatever. You can think what you want to think, but here's the truth. I pray you receive it, brother. But even if you don't, I'm not going to let your unbelief influence my belief because I'm going to receive everything that God has for me. I'm going to challenge you guys to get the most out of every single minute that you're here. Not only from the instructor, but from each other. Let's sharpen one another through this process. Let's be there for one another. Let's, not, let's work hard not to tempt one another in ways that we shouldn't be tempted over this next season. And if we're going through a hard time, let, let's find those people who, who are going through difficult times. Let's challenge them to get beyond themselves and stop living in a pity party if they are. And, and to really step into all that God has for them. Because guys, it's life and death out there. This is not brain surgery. This is much more important. This is eternity. And people are dying and going to hell every single day. And you and I have the answer that they need. So we have the opportunity to to see that transformation happen, as Carrie mentioned, not just for ourselves, which is completely awesome, but it's also for the world around us that's dying and going to hell. You know something? Jesus died for every single person who's in hell. He's died for every single person who's going there. But you know something? We We have the ability to tell them that they don't have to. That God has a better pathway. That he, has a better, he has a better solution. And we can, we can not only tell them that, but we can show them that as well. You know, I love about in Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, it says that, I am sure of this, and I'm reading out of the ESV, it says, I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. You know, it talks about him being faithful to bring it to completion. Let me just say this, that you have started something you have taken a step of faith. And you know, please understand that it's not, and I, I, wanna, I wanna balance this out with what we're saying when we talk about pressing and lay hold of it. This is a work of the Holy Spirit. So come here and just say, Lord, here I am. That you are faithful, you're going to bring to completion. Listen, if God brought you here, he's gonna, he's gonna be all the provision that you need. Amen? Not just on the first day of school, but on the third and the fifth and the eighth and the ninth month of school, the first year of school, the second year of school, the third year of school, he's faithful to complete that which he started within you. And so when difficult times come, that's the verse you can minister to your heart and know he started something, he's going to bring it to completion. Like Andrew said, God didn't bring you here to fail. And it's not just the earthly provision that he's going to provide, but then all the opportunities for you to change. You know, when Mike was talking and about us ministering one to another and encouraging each other, I just got this picture. I think it's a picture from the Lord. 
Listen, you can choose to, to speak life over your situation and come in and say, guys, I need to be joined in prayer. I'm getting a little discouraged. I need you to help me speak life. I'm choosing to speak life over my finances, my family, my health. Can you join me? Versus you coming in and whining. And then finding the other whiners. We're not going to have a string section out there. We're not going to have a whining section out there serenading you during your breaks. Do choose not to be that person. Amen? Because the enemy would love to start something here with our words. And so choose to say, you know what? No matter what I see, no matter what I feel, no matter what has been said about me, I'm going to speak life over myself. And as people come hurt or frustrated, you choose to speak life one to another. Come alongside of each other and lift up each other's hands. Pray, believe. As God speaks to you, as God is speaking to you, bless each other. There's going to be people that you're going to bless financially with prayer, with furniture, with food, with groceries. Hallelujah. This is a new body that you're a part of. I also feel like, I just want to say this, choose what you will not be distracted by. Choose today that you're not going to be distracted about what your finances say. You just choose it. You make the determination before you even face it. You know what? Finances are not a distraction to me. Because guess what? Tuition is actually God's bill. It's not your bill. Okay, who's in, okay, who in this room is in obedience today to come here? All right. So it's God's bill. Does that mean you need to steward your time and finances wisely? Absolutely. Do you need to listen in faith? Absolutely. Do you need to confess over your finances? Absolutely. But guess what? It's God's bill. So when something, when worry tries to creep up, you can either choose worry or you can choose faith and thanksgiving. I will not be anxious about anything. You choose today what you're going to be distracted. You can choose to say, you know what? I'm either going to be distracted by it or I'm not ever going to be anxious about finances this year. I'm not going to be anxious about job and work at all. Not once this year. You determine what you want. So who is going to choose not to let worry be part of their school year? <laughs> and all the staff says hallelujah. <laughs> you think you got to worry? We got to deal with you, okay? So I'm just saying, we're going to choose not to worry because we want to serve you. We want to bless you. We're going to choose. We're not going to be distracted by these things. You choose right now that no matter who says you're crazy or stupid for obeying God, you choose right now that those words do not distract you. Amen? You choose that any relational issues that crop up, maybe it's with people that you're living with, people that are neighbors, people that you work with, you choose today, you are not going to let relational issues distract you. You're not going to get tied up with emotions and worry of those that you live with. Amen? Husbands, wives, hallelujah. You're choosing right now that no attack has power within your life. See, sometimes we think this like, well, we're just going to get prepared for the battle. No, we're going to run into it and say, guess what? You've already lost. (laughs) Right? Hallelujah. Mike's always saying this. He says, we're battling now from a place of victory. You're already on the top of the mountain, literally. Okay? You're on the top of the mountain, You have victory in Christ Jesus. You have the spirit of God. And so now, hallelujah, you're battling from a place of victory. So when attacks come, uh, 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 I'm so glad my high heel did not come off. (laughs) I was just thinking about that impaling Andrew Womack on the first day of Bible school. Would have really been bad. All right, hallelujah. But here's the thing. You battle from a place of victory. Hallelujah. No way, devil. I'm here and I'm in obedience and therefore all the... I'm standing on the mountain of provision and of wisdom. 
and God will lead me through. And the Holy Spirit is my teacher. He is my guide. He is the spirit of truth and he will bring back to my remembrance what I need to hear. Do not get overwhelmed that you're gonna forget everything you learned. For how many second year are kind of like, yes, it was a fire hose last year, third year. Let me tell you this, if you are faithful to keep a hungry heart and have ears to hear and just write down what the spirit is saying to you, I guarantee after 22 years of having graduated, God still reminds me of things I learned in Bible school. Amen. Amen. Because he says he's the one who brings his words back to remembrance. If you keep your heart sensitive, do not be overwhelmed that you're going to forget all that you learned. Just choose to meditate on those things that God pokes your heart on. Write it down. Highlight it. I'm going to act on it. I'm going to confess it. I'm going to look at it. So then go back and then as you drive down the mountain or as you're at work, choose to think on those things. That's what's going to keep your heart able to retain all the things that you're going to get here. Yeah. Amen. Um, one, one final scripture for me, I'll just say this, you know, in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, uh, it says, you know, we, we, the writer of Hebrews just talked about all the heroes of the faith in, in chapter 11. And in, then in chapter 12, he says this in verse number 2, he says, looking unto Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith. You know, as Andrew mentioned before, God didn't bring you here to, here to fail. He's going to complete that which he started. And I want to challenge you, keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. No matter what the situation is, no matter what comes against you, no matter what the struggles, because guys, difficult times are going to come. That's a promise from Jesus. You know, but, that, but again, that's okay because we're not trying to get through them. We've, Jesus already overcame them. We're just receiving, the, we're just walking in the manifestation of the victory that he called us in. And I want to, again, challenge you not to let anything distract you from his calling that he has in your life. As Carrie mentioned this earlier, you know, sit down with the Lord at the start of the, 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 this Bible school and just really ask, ask the Lord, Lord, what do you want me to receive out of this year? And begin writing those things down. I want to challenge you to find out what the Lord wants you to come away with it, uh, during the school year. And I want to say this, Again, those distractions, don't be distracted by trying to get your, what's the best way to say it, um, your MRS degree, or to get that, to, or to get that Do you that know what the one. MRS degree is, ladies? I'm going to find me a man in Bible school. Or, don't get distracted by trying to get that, that woman of your dreams. Okay, <laughs> you know something? God knows. God knows exactly who you're supposed to be with. And if you're already married, you're with that person. We just want to say, say, say that. That shouldn't have to be said. That shouldn't have to be said, but I'm going to say it anyways. So, <laughs> but you know, don't let anything pull your attention away from everything the Lord has for you. Because this time is critical for the rest of your life. God's building foundations that you're going to walk out on as you continue to discover everything that he has for you. Amen. Whether you're called to go to, the, go to the nations or you're called to go to the grocery store, it doesn't make a difference. You're still called to be the light and be the salt. So allow that perfect work to be completed in your heart. Allow the transformation to happen and don't let the, those distractions come. You know something? I, I'll just tell you something. The word of God is so rich. It would take, it would take an innumerable number of lifetimes to get it all. And in praise God, we're going to have eternity. But let eternity start right now. Yeah. Amen. Good. Let, let what the Lord has, wants to, to work in you over this season be your priority as well as he's his priority. Because God's not up there in heaven right now going, okay, as soon as they pray enough, then I'll give them a little nugget here and a little nugget there. No, no. He says, he says whatever you want, I give you all of me. Just, you, just, you, you come and you take it. Yes. If, if, you, if you want only, only my big toe, no problem. If you, just, if you just want the fungus off of my feet, it's all yours. <laughs> But I'll tell you something, if you want all of Jesus, he's not holding anything back. <laughs> Amen. Don't go for the fungus. Okay? <laughs> Seek after the Lord. Discover him. You know, God's got great things in store for you. Amen. He'll take you so far and accomplish so much. Amen. And on the flip side, if you submit yourself to your own will, gosh, you can accomplish some things. And it'll be nice. And it may be helpful for some people. But gosh, I want to be impactful for eternity. 
I don't want to just be helpful for this lifetime. I mean, that's nice, but that, that's, that's called morality. And that's what the world says is good. God says, no, no, son, I'm going to give you ethics. I'm going to give you something that's greater than, than the world's morals. And I'm going, to, I'm going to make you impactful, not only for your lifetime, but for the generations to come after you. Yeah. Hallelujah. That's what I want. Amen. I want the name of Jesus to be glorified through me and people to forget my name because his name is really all that matters. Amen. 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 Well, as we close, we just want to encourage you that you can have as much of the Lord as you want. Isn't that awesome? He said, you know, freely you have received, now freely give. I praise God that we freely received in this room. But there's many things we don't even know we possess. So as we go along this journey together, learning what, we've, what God's given to us, it's going to change our lives forever. Amen? One last thing. Even within this room, you're going to meet people that are hungry for God, and there are going to be people that you meet, unfortunate, like Andrew said, that have fallen, are falling asleep. And so you choose also, I would encourage you, and this is something God had to teach me when I was in Bible school. There was a particular young lady that I used to sit by, and I loved her. She had a fantastic sense of humor. But the problem was she was always cracking the perfect jokes right in the middle of the sermons. It was like, it was like she could just like add on to something the teacher said that just made it so funny. Oh, my goodness. And I had to stop sitting next to her. Because even as much as I loved her and she just was full of life, she was just also highly distracted. And her distraction, if I let it, would have bled into my learning process. And so what I'm going to encourage you in school hours and even after school hours, choose to be around people that sharpen you, that don't let you be negative, that people that you can say, Let's grow together versus, and, and it always happens every year, there's always a section of a class or the school that's the peanut gallery. I'm just saying it. There's a peanut gallery and they're checking their Facebook, they're not taking notes, they're kind of distant, they're goofing off, they're, they're clocking in and then leaving for coffee. I know because I remember I was at Starbucks one day and I'm sitting there mentoring an alumni and these three girls walk in and I'm like well girls I thought you were in class I thought you're supposed to be in class and one of these young girls is a girl I was mentoring and I said why aren't you in class and they're like ah it was just Andrew teaching today <laughs> sorry Andrew so you body slammed her right oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> Watch out! Uh, so, do it. <laughs> so I, I remember, I said, well, girls, you need to get back to class. Oh, yeah, yeah, we're just going to grab some coffee. I said, no, you need to get back to class. And I looked at the young girl that I was mentoring, and I said, our mentorship is over. Don't come to me asking me how to change and grow and whining about how the devil is trying to destroy your life when you will not put yourself under the word of God, which God called you to do. Amen? Love you, pumpkin. And so get back to school. You choose. There's going to be people that get, and I hope this is not you, don't be the kind of person that gets slow and say, you know what? I'm better than I've ever been. You know, I think this is good. Oh, I'm good. I think I'm going to take a break. Because you can sit there in school, still come and take a break here. And so be careful who you're around. Choose to be. And if you start to see people getting dry and lazy and full of distraction and excuses, love on them, speak life to them. But if you need to move so it's not a distraction, then do that. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. All right. We're going to close in prayer. So, Father, we just thank you. We thank you for the miracles in this room. Lord, I thank you that you brought us here for such a time as this. And so, Father, I just thank you for teachable hearts in this room. I thank you for humility and hunger. Lord, I thank you that we are choosing right now. We will not be distracted. We're choosing right now. We will not be worried. We're choosing right now. We will not be anxious. 
But we have come to a place where we are speaking life over our situations. And God, we just now live out the joy of obedience. We live out the joy of obedience that we have come, we have listened, we're obeying. And so, Lord, our hearts are ready. We thank you, Lord. Lord, we just commit this year into your hands, Father. And we just thank you in advance for all the amazing things that you're going to do through our lives. Lord, we love you so much. And we just thank you, Father. The only reason that we're even here is because you loved us first. And because you get you paid such a high price for each one of us, Lord. I thank you, Father. You're going to get an amazing return on your investment through my life and through everyone's lives here. Lord, you're, you're just incredible. And we bless your name. We thank you, Father, that you've given us the ability to bring you glory, to point people unto you, and to see lives transformed. So I thank you, Father, for, for a joy that is set in, in your people's hearts, the joy that we get to seek you, the, the joy that we get to discover you, the, the, the joy that we get to know you in a very unique way that's only unique to you and I and to you and us. We thank you for this, Father. We bless your name. And we commit this season into your hands, and we're expecting great and mighty times of transformation. And, and, and we thank you, Father, that you have already laid the groundwork for in preparation for our transformation. So we just say yes to every single one of your promises in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, guys. We look forward to this year with you and getting to know you, and God's got good things ahead. Amen. Mike and Kerry, thank you so much. Can we just thank Mike and Kerry and Andrew one more time? Okay, who's ready to go have some fun? All right, so um, for those of you who are brand new, last year because of COVID, we weren't able to get our yearbook out in time because we didn't really do much for the first six months of the year. However, returning students, the yearbooks are here. Yay! If you've bought one, please go pick it up in the bookstore. Now, I'm gonna make a public apology, right? You know this place is a safe place, right? It's okay to make mistakes. So I thought I'd just lead the way and just make the first mistake of the year. I only make about two a year. So, you know, I'm 50% of the way there. Um, and those of you who want a little bit of a giggle, I've already apologized to Andrew. I don't even ask me how this happened. I have no idea. At the back of the book, we have some of the staff pictures. And Andrew Womack is not Andrew Womack. He's Andrew Cromack. <laughs> I've apologized to him, he's, he's so humble, he's like, if that's the worst thing that can happen, we're on a good day. So I figured, you know what, let me bring that to light before everyone else goes, she can't spell. No, I can't spell, and I didn't see it either, so I apologize. Thank you so much for accepting my apology. The rest of you can remember me as the girl who calls him Andrew Cromack, all right? You may all follow on suit and just make mistakes and we'll just forgive each other and it's all good, right? Okay, so we're gonna have some fun now. We have hamburgers and hot dogs outside. Yes, we have a jousting arena that you get to joust with an inflatable, I think it's, I hope it's inflatable. I hope it's not a serious weapon that you guys get to hit each other with. We have bouncy house, we have some little ones here and for the big kids too, I, yeah, amen. All right, and, um, Face painting. Who hasn't had their face painted since they were seven? Go and get your face painted and just have some fun. We have a cornhole tournament in the banquet hall. However, it's full. So I apologize if you weren't able to already sign up, the spots are full, but go and cheer on your new classmates. Um, we have the fire department here as well. So hopefully they've arrived. There should be a fire truck outside. Go and take a tour of their fire truck and just say hi to them. They're spending some time with us today, so uh, behave, because I think they can take that water hose and crowd control, right? And then we also have a dunk tank here today. Where is Mark, Joshua, Clay, and Scott? Can I have you gentlemen up here, please? Okay, so for you returning students, at some point, maybe you had to visit one of our principal's office. Today's payback, hang on. <laughs> for those of you who are new, okay, this is your Dean, Mark. Clay just has way too much fun, so you need to dunk him because, you know, all right? 
Scott's in charge of the whole education system and curriculum and, and schedule. So if you don't like where he's put Andrew's schedule, you dunk him today. All right. Joshua, another one of our deans, our advisors, at some point, if you misbehave, you may end up in his office. So, you know, if you think you're going to do something bad, just get him back now ahead of time. All right. <laughs> Gentlemen, any um, final words before you uh, get soaked? Keras is all about choices. <laughs> Choose well. That's all I'm saying. Choose well. You know, Claire asked us, she said, you know, I'm going to give you an opportunity. So if you want to hurl an insult at the crowd, this is your chance. And to be honest with you, I don't have the heart to do it. I'm scared, so uh, just go easy on me. I'm excited, so uh, you know, feel free, but uh, play. Everybody hold up your throwing arm. I want to see. Hold up your throwing arms. Tyler, you got an arm. Okay, but everybody else, that's weak. We're going to be dry, fellas. We're going to be dry. Yeah, I'm, I'm right there with Clay. You guys are all called the Bible school, not the major league, so I'm not really worried. <laughs> not really worried about your throwing arms either, so. Yeah. Look for the walking away dry. I pray your aim is straight, your arm is strong, and you all get soaked. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to release you to go and have some fun. Tomorrow morning, school starts at 8 o'clock. First years, you are in here. Second years, you are in the banquet hall. Third years, you are downstairs or in your respective classrooms. All right. God bless you guys. Have fun. And we love you. Thank you.